is a criminal lack of videos on my channel about D menu, considering how often I use it, which is absolutely constantly. And the last full length video I made about it was like my fifth video ever when I really didn't know how to talk to a camera. Um, to be honest, I still don't, but I wanted to make a full video about it and go over some of the things I use it for in the hope of giving you some inspiration and ideas for your own scripts. And to just briefly go over, you know, some of what I use it for, um, I use it to manage my notes here. It uses LS to sort in a most recently accessed order, or I could just use dmenu to fuzzy find through them since it's a fuzzy finder. Um, I can create a new note, which opens a dmenu prompt that I can ex enter, you know, the name of the note in it, whatever, and it will go ahead and make a note there. Um, I could also, instead of actually naming it, I can just press enter and it'll go ahead and give a date for the note. Um, I also use it as a system uh, manager thing, so, you know, reboot and shutdown and that sort of stuff. I also have that actually linked up to a kill menu just for killing a command based on, you know, the name and the PID, so I could fuzzy search through the actual names of the commands um, and then press enter and it'll kill the PID there, so uh, that's kind of useful. Um, I use it to switch audio outputs. I use it for my clipboard history manager here, which I actually did make a full video about, so I won't dwell on that script too much. Um, and I actually made this script the other day to select a song and add it to my MPDQ, which the use case for this is actually if I'm ever using something full screen and I'm really focused on it and I don't want to break my focus by like opening up my music player and like going over to search, um, using dmenu for this is super easy since it's a fuzzy finder. So it just fuzzy finds my music directory. I could, you know, start typing like the name of a song here, press enter on it, and it'll just start playing it, which um, I have actually made so much use of this recently. Um, and we can start with this script. Um, it's very simple. Literally just finds through my music directory for any mp3 files, sorts those, which really isn't needed. Um, what is needed is this said statement if you're using mpd. Um, mpd, for whatever reason, will not read absolute paths, and this was a headache for me to figure out. Uh, but yeah, it won't read absolute paths, so you have to remove um, everything preceding your music directory. So it can only read, like, as you can see with it, it's only going to read this, you know, directory that's actually in my music directory. So that's a quirk of MPD there. Uh, but anyways, I just piped that into D menu. I've got dash B to put it on the bottom. Uh, dash I is gonna be case insensitive matching. Um, dash L1 is just gonna be one line to keep it clean there. This or exit zero is pretty important because this is what's actually gonna prevent it from selecting something if I just exit it. Um, meaning like if I just press escape here without selecting something, right? It needs to go ahead and exit cleanly. It shouldn't be trying to select something. And if I didn't have this, it potentially could add everything to the queue and you know try to execute this on every single file, which would not be very fun. So um, the last part is just notify send the file uh, and then just use MPC to go ahead and add it to the queue and such. So pretty simple there. Um, I've got this D menu video picker script, which I think like everybody has some sort of variation of this already. This is probably not that new to you. Um, just, you know, picking files from a directory with D menu, whether it be videos or documents or whatever else. In this case, I've just got like videos and just using MPV to open the videos, whatever. Pretty simple stuff there. Um, but I have my D menu note script, which is I guess like a slightly more complicated version of that. Um, and the key thing here is we're actually gonna be accepting input and that's these three characters. Um, the back arrow, the and sign, and the minus sign. That's what's going to allow dmenu to actually be like a prompt to accept input. Um, and to just give you like a really simple example of that, I have this little dmenu calculator thing, which honestly is not really necessary. Like, I mean, it's a calculator, right? Um, since, you know, I could just open up a terminal and go to BC. So it's not really that needed to have like a dmenu calculator. Uh, but just for the sake of like explaining, you know, a one liner dmenu thing here, um, essentially just uses notify send. So it's like notify send. Um, D menu, um, we can give it a prompt, calc, um, and then it's just the thing to take input with it. So back arrow and then an and sign and then a minus sign. And we can pipe that into bc-l uh, BC here. Um, I think I need to send error to dev null. I'm not sure if I actually need to do that or not, but anyways, this should go ahead, give us a little calculator there and I could just, you know, do a calculation, pretty simple. So that's like a one liner D menu to accept input. But yeah, this is the string you're gonna want if you wanna be accepting input through that D menu prompt. Anyway, so in my notes script, I accept input to get a name there. Um, and you'll see this or exit zero thing a lot. I try to use this uh, pretty much everywhere. So that way, you know, if I go through to getting to this uh, enter a name and I press escape, it doesn't do anything. If a name was not entered and I do still press enter and choose to continue, um, then it's just gonna set, you know, a date for the name there. Um, it's gonna open up a terminal with NeoVim and that new note. 
Uh, this selected function is just that initial stage that's actually showing the different notes in the folder. And it's literally just using ls uh, dash t1. And that's what the t1 is what's going to organize it by uh, most recently accessed there. Um, I'm not going to dwell on this too much since I did actually explain it in full in a very old video. So if you did want to see like a full breakdown of some of these scripts, um, I think this next one as well uh, is in that video if you wanted to like just learn, you know, bash scripting style stuff. But uh, just for the sake of like showing you what can be done with dmenu, this is just uh, uh, putting some stuff as prompts into dmenu. Um, this is this is the audio switcher script there. So it'll put in headphone speakers Bluetooth and I will match to the corresponding function and it will just use the command to actually set, you know, the right audio sync there. Um, I've got my dmenu uh, temperature script, which uh, if you have friends in Europe or you're European and have friends in America, this is this is pretty useful. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, yeah, this is just going to convert, you know, temperatures. If I like type something, it'll convert it there. So that's pretty useful. I'm um, just using BC to do the conversion. It's going to take input with dmenu uh, as previously shown with these three characters. Uh, pretty simple in concept. Um, I've also got this dmenu uh, system, menu, whatever you want to call it, uh, with the whole uh, can kill a process and it also just can uh, sleep and reboot, etc. So um, the killing a process is probably the most interesting part. So just uh, opening up that kill menu, we've got, you know, the PID and the command there. Um, it's just using ps-u, uh, o pid com, and then pipes that into dmenu. Um, dash I, case insensitive, dash C is just going to center it, sense center it, uh, dash L10 is 10 lines, um, and then just give a prompt to say kill. Um, it's just going to awk out just the uh, PID there instead of actually the command. So that way we can just go ahead and use Xargs to just kill that PID. Um, so yeah, not too complicated there. Um, then we've got uh, my D menu timer script, which I actually use constantly. It's a little bit jank, but it usually gets the job done. So uh, it's literally just setting a timer and putting it in my status bar. Um, you can just, you know, set some arbitrary number of minutes there and it'll just set a timer for me. I use this absolutely constantly since I don't actually have like an egg timer or anything in real life. Um, and then I've got my clipboard history script, which uh, I did make a full video about it. So if you want to see the full breakdown of this script beyond the dmenu parts of it, I will link that video since, I don't know, I think it's kind of a cool script. Um, but anyways, the dmenu part here is just bringing up dmenu to go ahead and, you know, pick an entry from my clipboard history. So, you know, I could go down here and pick this and it'll recopy it to clipboard. And it's just, you know, put dmenu on the bottom, three lines, uh, case insensitive matching so I could search through it with fuzzy find if I wanted to and define a prompt. So those are just a bunch of various examples for dmenu. I did want to point out the center patch for dmenu. I think I mistakenly said at one point that this was like natively part of dmenu. It is not natively part of dmenu. It's a patch. And I think I forgot that I had actually patched it in like so long ago. Um, so yeah, this is the center patch. And in terms of dmenu patches, Honestly, the functionality is really there without the patches. Like you probably aren't gonna need to patch in too much in terms of functionality. You might need to, I mean, there's definitely some other stuff here. Uh, you might want, uh, where is it, X resources if you want, you know, colors. Uh, but a lot of the D menu patches are gonna be cosmetic stuff. I did also want to mention um, Rofi, the application launcher, if this is your best friend instead of dmenu, um, I think that's cool because, you know, all of these tools, I mean, it's not like one is, you know, objectively superior to the other, in my opinion. I think it's just what is your use case? What are you using it for? Um, if you want like an application launcher that you're using constantly, um, personally, I have pretty much all of my main applications bound to hotkeys. So I just don't really use dmenu as an application launcher that often. Um, but, you know, if you are using an application launcher and you want like graphical icons and that sort of stuff, then Rofi could be a good choice. Um, but the point of this video is not, you know, dmenu supremacy or something like that. It's more just like these are sorts of things that you could use, you know, with a fuzzy finding menu, whatever fuzzy finding menu you may be using. Anyways, that's about all I had to say. I will see you next time. Peace.